Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. All right, guys, so the thumbnail, right? They lied to us. And what I'm talking about, guys, is the solar dump load or diversion load on your charge controllers. So we're looking at my controller here uh, for my um, Outback system with the Outback inverters, Outback charge controllers. And then I do have a um, midnight solar charge controller for the wind turbine, right? Uh, as you guys can see, my batteries are pretty much almost full already. They're at 60 volts, no problem. Okay. So here's a scenario. My batteries get fully charged at 60 volts. Um, it's still early in the morning and I have a lot of extra power that I could easily start dumping or diverting into something else to use that extra power, right? Um, and, and that's more than capable. Absolutely, you can do that. But I want to explain to you why the way they tell us to actually wire it up is wrong, okay? Uh, let me explain that. All right, so we are in the power shed here. We have our batteries. We have our charge controllers over here. We also have the breakers and inverters, breakers again, hub, and all that, right? Okay, so most charge controllers, especially the higher end ones, um, will have a feature where you can dump the extra power, right? You can divert that extra power um, you, you know, doing a lot of different things, like, for example, um, heating hot water through a heating element. That extra power to heat hot water, whatever. And I used to do that on my biodigester that's on the other side of this wall. Um, when I had all the extra power, why not, right? Start dumping it. And don't get me wrong, it did a great job of getting that water hot. I mean, the IBC tank holds a lot of water, and it was able to heat all that up easily, no problem. I mean, pretty hot water. Um, now, this is the point I want to make. Is that if you go online and you look at Outback's wiring diagram and Midnight Solar's wired, wiring diagram and even other charge controller wiring diagrams for the diversion or dump load feature, how to wire it, I to, to me... It is not the correct way to hook up a dump load. And I'm going to explain why. Does it work the way they recommend on wiring it? Sure it does. Sure it does. But here's the problem I found. So on my controller, I can also look at it on my computer. And I can keep track of the spikes, the ups and downs on the voltage or battery capacity. Right? So when your batteries get fully charged like my batteries are right now, if you don't have it dumping the extra power, the, the charge controllers will taper down the amount of power coming in to, to prevent the batteries from overcharging. Okay, that's what they're made to do. But if you decide to select the feature of dumping or diverting um, extra power to a different device because you have all that power, yeah, you can do it. But here's the major problem. What I found from looking at my, my data sheet because when I was heating this biodigester with all the extra power, it did work, sure. But when I looked at the chart, I found out something that all of you should be aware of. Technically, what it's supposed to be doing is taking the power off the top end and diverting it. The problem is, is that the way they have it, they, they tell you to wire the dump load or diversion load is, they want you to pull the power off the battery, right? The positive negative. So what they're doing is we're using a solid state relay, Okay. And so on both of these, they have a 12 volt little signal, well, which will energize a solid state relay, which is just a switch, right? Like, like a light switch. And the other side of that solid state relay is a positive. Um, you can run your positives through. Okay. You don't put positive and negative to it on the other side. It's just positive. It's a switch. It's basically like a continuous line to a light bulb. You cut one of the wires in half and you put the switch in. Okay. Now, when it engages, because the other two, the positive and negative is actually coming from the battery or from your um, bus bars in here, which is all DC, right? It's coming, the power is coming from here, not technically coming directly from the charge controllers. It is micro cycling your batteries. So after I started looking at the data and going back, I realized that in one day, it was micro cycling my batteries on the top end. Oh my God, I, I actually got scared because it was microcycling it so much. Because the way these work is, they, they work very similar, and others do as well, is that you set the high point and you set the low point of when it triggers to on to start dumping and the low point when it stops or st stop dumping, right? Now, the problem with that is, is that 
it'll keep fluctuating between those two numbers. Even if you make the numbers very close, they keep fluctuating between those two numbers because that's the only way that that's, that's the way it's set up in a sense. But the problem is it's pulling the DC power directly from the battery, not from the solar panels, okay? Because the charge controller is reading the voltage and what's going on with the batteries, okay? So if the batteries start to drop, I'll give you an example. If I was to turn on this air compressor right here that's plugged in to this side, it'll bring down the um, the voltage and battery a little, barely, but a little bit, right? And so the charge controller is going to realize that, hey, wait a minute, the battery voltage is dropped. We can send more power back into the battery. And that's how that system works, right? But the problem is, is that with the way they have it wired or the wiring diagram that they're recommending, it technically microcycles your batteries on the top end of everything. And if you take enough microcycling on the top end, you actually add up to one complete cycle of a full discharge and, and um, recharge, in a sense. I hope you guys are following along with me here. It's hard for me to try to put all of this into words because it's kind of complicated sometimes here. So do not wire your dump load or diversion load to the wiring diagram that they, they give you or you look up online. Don't do it because it's microcycling your batteries way too much. To me, I would rather not microcycle my batteries on the top end to prevent my batteries and save my batteries for a long period of time for years than have them microcycle every single day. And I'm just putting more, more, more strain onto the system. So he, here's the thing. I sat down and I started thinking about, okay, how do I not touch the actual battery power and still divert to a different item, right? Because I still want to use the dump load. I still want a diversion load. I still want to be able to um, move that power someplace else because I have so much of it. But I don't want to microcycle my batteries and I don't want to touch the battery power at all. So then I sat down and I started wire, doing a wiring diagram on my, you know, drawing out my own wiring diagram. And what, what I found out is if I was to utilize two solid state relays and bus bars, I could actually now divert power on the solar panel side. Because when you have your, your charge controller, you have your solar panel wires coming in, right? Goes to the charge controller. Then you have your positive and negative that comes out that goes to your batteries. Okay. Well, what we need to do is start doing the dump load on the solar side, not on the battery side. And you can do that, but you just have to remember that it's all gonna be DC anyway, right? And you do have to re, um, you know, recognize the amount of voltage and amperage that you have on the solar side. So that way you're matching it up with whatever the dump load is. Now they do have converters and transformers that can either step it up or step it down and you can do a lot of you know interesting things on the solar side, not on the DC side. And it will work. Now, the problem is, is that you have no choice but to only use the DC power on the solar side of the dump load. Because you can also do a dump load on the AC side. The problem is, is that it's still pulling through your inverters and it's still pulling the battery, the battery power to run all this, right? So it's, so there's two ways to do a dump load. You can do it on the DC side, you know, after the charge controller to your batteries, or you can do it on the AC side after your inverters. And so that's two ways you could do a dump load. But on both of these ways I just explained, you are microcycling your batteries on the top end, which is no good. Okay? So I, I hope this is making sense, guys. We have to do the dump load and diversion load on the solar side before it even hits the charge controller. Okay? So what's going to happen is the charge controller is going to do its job like it is right now, get my batteries fully charged. Okay, and then once that happens, yes, we're still going to utilize a solid state relay, okay, with bus bars. And when it triggers on, instead of the loop, the positive and negative going back to the batteries, it bypasses the batteries completely. It is on the solar side that we're actually tapping into. That way, the batteries get fully charged up to where they want and they sit. Nothing gets pulled out of those batteries. It only takes the, pa the power off the top end on the solar side of the wires coming into the charge controller. So I sat down and I made a wiring diagram with some solid state relays and some bus bars and stuff. And I believe it's only going to take two solid state relays and uh, I think three bus bars 
for your positive, your negative, and if you're going to have a common ground bar um, to run through the system. <clears throat> so I just want to share that information with you guys because I am no longer ever going to dump the extra power I have through the way that they recommend on wiring your system for the dump load or diversion load. It is microcycling my batteries way too much. And it's it's adding up to a lot of full cycles within one day because it's dumping so much power and it's kicking on, kicking off, kicking on, kicking off, right? It just it's just not worth it. Not worth it at all. We need to avoid touching the batteries. Only use the battery when you need the battery. We need to start doing the dump load and diversion load on the other side of things where the solar is coming into the charge controller, not after it comes out. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have any questions. If it, I'm sorry if it was a little confusing here. I'm a little excited about things like this. And sometimes, um, you know, me being excited can be hard for maybe some of you to follow along. Um, but look at the wiring diagram that comes with these and even some other charge controllers. Look at the wiring diagram for the dump load. They want you to put the positive and negative to come from the battery to power that dump load. Okay, but the charge controller is only sending the signal to the solid state relay to say, hey, turn on, and then it's pulling the power from the battery. That is no good. I looked at the data on my um, computer. I After I, I didn't even realize to look at it until I started thinking, I wonder how much power I'm actually using all in the dump load side. And I started looking at the data, and I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah, I'm using a, a ton of power. My batteries are still fully charged, sure. But... I keep microcycling my batteries on the top end, non-stop, all day long. That's no good. No good at all. So think about rewiring it a different way, guys. Uh, maybe in a future video when I get some time, I will, because that's the way I'm going to wire it. I'm going to avoid touching the battery and go only on the solar side. That's how I'm going to do it. And um, when I get ready to do that, maybe I'll share that video with everybody so you guys can see, um, have an understanding and actually see what I'm talking about here. Um, but be cautious guys, if you guys are going to wire it the way they recommend, because you're microcycling your batteries, which is not worth it to me it's because, because your battery cost, regardless if you have lithium ion batteries or you have lead batteries, it's still not worth microcycling your batteries at all. They cost too much money. Not worth it to do it that way. Do it the other way. And I promise you, you'd be thanking me in the long run. So anyway, guys, give me a thumbs up on the video. I just wanted to share that information with you guys. And I'll try to make an example for you guys and, and kind of walk you guys through that um, example I'm going to make. And uh, we'll go from there. I just want to see everybody save their investment. Don't put strain on your system more than you need to, right? And that's the way I started thinking about this. Is like if we stop the we start diverting the power before it even goes through the charge controller, um, then we're not touching anything. Nothing's getting overworked. Nothing. So that's something to to um, consider and look at for sure so anyway guys thanks for tuning in and i'll see you guys on the next one